Welcome to the Clutch Tech Support Clutch Installation Lab. This is our solid flywheel conversion system for the 2005 and up Dodge Ram with a 5.9 liter Cummins diesel. Now in 2005, Dodge started off with the NV5600 transmission. That was a cast iron transmission and it was easy to identify that one because reverses to the right and forward. Then about mid-year they changed the supply of the transmission to a transmission we know as the G56. G56, really easy to identify, reverses to the left and back. Now the G56 used a different style clutch system. They used a self-adjusting clutch, a traditional disc, and a dual mass flywheel. But what was really unique about it was they didn't bolt the flywheel system directly to the crankshaft. They had an adapter plate. The adapter plate bolted to the crankshaft, and then the adapter plate drove the dual mass flywheel. So think of this adapter or drive plate as the same role as a flex plate in an automatic transmission. So now time to service it. Take the transmission and the old dual mass flywheel equipped truck clutch system out as one piece. We'll show you how to do that in the video. But we need to pre-build our system on the bench. So we have a solid flywheel, pilot bearing is already installed, clutch disc, self-adjusting clutch cover, new pressure plate bolts, clutch release bearing, and two tools. We've got an alignment tool that we'll use to center the disc on the flywheel. And this unusual looking tool, it's got kind of a gear on it and a hex. This is a barring tool. And we'll use this to turn the engine over to go from bolt to bolt. Makes it real easy. This is a unique tool, very, very helpful. And we also have just two of these bolts. And what do you do with two of these bolts? Well, these are the handles that we're gonna install in the back of this flywheel system and lift it up onto the input shaft of the transmission and install it as an assembly. That's a real easy way to install this clutch. So let's take a look at how we pre-build this solid flywheel clutch system. Then I'll show you how to remove the old one and install the new one. Tools required for the assembly process. Ratchet, 3 8 socket, torque wrench, clean shop rags, and brake clean. We'll start with the brake clean. All these friction surfaces, the cast iron, that needs to be good and clean. Get rid of any preservatives on there. We don't want to contaminate the clutch disc at all. So we're going to hit it with a shop towel a couple times, turn the rag, give it another spray, get that all cleaned up. And the same cleaning process for the flywheel friction surface. Let's use this alignment tool as a substitute for the input shaft for this demonstration. Prior to applying grease to it, you want to make sure these teeth in the input shaft are really clean. Lightly spread the grease across all the surfaces. Take this little packet, fold it, crease it, run it back and forth, get it in all those teeth. Now we'll take the clutch disc and just slide the clutch disc onto the input shaft, slide it off, index, slide it on, slide it off, index. You're just trying to spread the grease around. When you're done, wipe up the excess grease and you're all set. Now the pilot bearing is down inside here and you'll be able to see that it's greased prior to installation. Check the flywheel side orientation of the disc. Make sure there's no leftover excess grease. Alignment tool. Slide it down in there. Pick up the pilot. There you go. Now we've already cleaned the pressure plate surface. Pressure plate surface is all clean. Just going to line it up over the bolts. You always want to kind of check that alignment. Install the new bolts. These have got a shoulder on them that will transfer the location to the pilot holes in the flywheel. You get everything lined up just right. Always take a minute, double check that 
location. Now to tighten the clutch cover to the flywheel, I'm just going to use a ratchet. Each bolt is going to get about three quarter to one turn at a time in a staggered pattern. Sorry, no air tools allowed. Just take your time, tighten it down correctly just using a ratchet. And then using a torque wrench, tighten each bolt in a staggered pattern. That's the complete assembly. Just verify the alignment is good. A couple of self-adjusting questions come up every so often. Do I need to pre-adjust this system before I install it? No. These are preset, ready to install. Just make sure that these springs, anytime you handle a self-adjuster, that these springs are not stretched out. If it's all the way down here towards the end of the finger tab, either something has happened to that clutch, it's been damaged, it's a used clutch, but don't install one if the spring is all the way out. They're not quite touching each other, but they're compressed. So this system will adjust itself as the disc gets thinner from normal wear. Nothing to do there. Now the two lifting bolts. If you want to think of that as the 12 o'clock position, just put them in up here at the top. And when you go to pick this up and hang it on the front of that transmission, there's your handles to protect your hands. Now while the truck was on the ground, I went ahead and took the entire stick shift out and that hole in the transmission covered it up with clean shop rags. So no debris, tools, anything gets down inside this transmission. This one's also four wheel drive, so we're gonna have to deal with the transfer case and the front drive shaft but everything's looking real good. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the entire transmission for removal, but we're not gonna remove the transmission. So I'm gonna clear everything off of it that I need to. And then I'll show you how we're gonna take this original equipment dual mass flywheel off with a little bit different approach. In almost all other cases, you remove the transmission by itself and then come back and take the clutch and the flywheel off. In this case, Dodge built the truck a little bit differently they attach the flywheel to kind of a flex plate, but it doesn't have a ring gear on it. The ring gear is on the flywheel. So the bolts are actually up here in about the same area configuration as an automatic transmission torque converter would be. So you loosen these two screws, take this plate, and slide it off to the side. Now we supply a barring tool in the kit. The barring tool we put in this hole right here. and the teeth on the tool line up with the teeth on the ring gear of the flywheel. So we're going to put an inch and an eighth socket on here, run some extensions and a U-joint out to the front end, and I'll be able to turn the engine over because up here in this hole is where the bolt is going to show up. That's the bolt I need to remove to get this flywheel off and take the system off as one piece with the transmission. Now I'm using the barring tool to rotate the engine and you can see the bolt appear. I'll take all eight bolts out and then we'll be ready to take the transmission off. Okay, this is the last bolt. Cross members removed, transmission mounts gone, last bolt coming out. To start to take the transmission back, tip it back a little bit, right there. You can see the pilot of the back of the flywheel. So now we're just going to come down, and there's the entire transmission and dual mass flywheel coming out as one piece. Now this flywheel and clutch assembly weighs about 100 pounds, so to handle it, we put two bolts in the kit. So just thread the bolts in, about the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock position, get a good bite on it. And this is Tim, he works in our clutch testing lab and does a lot of great things around here. So he's volunteered to help slide this off.
and put it on a cart. That's how you remove it as one piece. That's how we're going to install the new system, just about like that. But before we do that, I'm going to take care of the clutch release bearing, the fork, the input shaft, get everything cleaned up in here. That's how we remove the dual mass flywheel and self-adjusting clutch on a G56. Okay, Tim, go ahead and spin that bearing. Ninety-nine thousand miles. Now remember, this bearing is turning continuously. There is no free play. That slave cylinder pushes on it with the spring inside of the slave cylinder, creates preload. Bearing turns. Engine's running. Bearing is turning. This is the adapter plate on the back of the engine that the flywheel bolts to. Here's the barring tool coming through, and you can see how when you rotate that, it will pick up the ring gear and rotate the engine for us. And up here, this hole, that's where we put the socket through to get all eight bolts out that we're holding the flywheel onto this adapter plate. We are going to reutilize all of these original equipment features with our system, starting with the flywheel pilot. This pilot locates the flywheel on the crankshaft. That's not the pilot for the input shaft, that's for the flywheel. We're going to use the same holes out here and drive our flywheel. We're going to use the barring tool again to rotate into position. We're going to put the bolts in right through here. So all I did was clean this up a little bit. This is ready to install, put the uh, system back together. I took a few minutes and cleaned the transmission up. In particular, I want the guide tube, the part where the clutch release bearing slides, to be very clean, no rust, and I put a light film of high temperature wheel bearing grease on there. A little bit of high temperature wheel bearing grease on the ball stud. Now the fork, the old fork, where the bearing push on the fork, right here, we were starting to get some flat spots. So we've got a new fork, and there's a little bit of grease right there where the fork pushes on the back of the bearing on both ears. Now I underlined the part number just so you can see it easily, but this part number goes in the lower left-hand corner as you're viewing it. Very, very important. The clutch release bearing, the hole in the middle of the bearing, has a groove in it. It's called a grease groove. Please make sure the grease groove gets filled up with grease. Touch it up a little bit if you have to with high temperature wheel bearing grease. A light film of grease on the bearing where it slides. Very, very important. Then slide it on. There we go. Get it on the ball stud. Now all I have to do is put the clip back on and the bearing and the fork looks pretty good. We include a pack of spline lubricant with each kit and it's just like a high temperature wheel bearing grease but there's not very much there. We don't want to get it all over everything. So we just want to take that grease, distribute it across the spline. I'm going to take the packet, kind of fold it up and make a little spreader, a little spatula. I'm going to draw it down in between each of the ten teeth on there and distribute the grease. The grease is there to help prevent the formation of corrosion. If this input shaft and disc spline start to rust together, then it doesn't slide freely for release. So taking a minute to make sure this input shaft is clean and just a very, very light film of grease, that's time well spent. By the way, anti-seize is not the correct product right here. Anti-seize just flings off and hits the friction material and that's not good. So. Clean, clean, greased, grease, grease under the grease groove, little dab of grease where the fork touches the ear, little dab of grease underneath the fork pockets, and notice the clip is on, so this is ready. And this is the engine side of our clutch and flywheel system. There's the two lifting bolts installed, so now we got to do is lift it up onto the input shaft. Okay, so by carefully lining it up, just slide it on. And now that entire clutch is uh, installed on the input shaft. To install the transmission, you can actually come up about as close as you can without anything touching. And then just start raising it up. Always watching your angles. Position against other parts. Now we just get to insert this round pilot plug into a round hole. OK, 
catching the exhaust bracket. So I'm going to clear that a little bit and swing back over. That was with the ear of the transmission. Now just by carefully guiding the transmission in, lining up the pilot of the flywheel into the engine, making sure that we get the transmission case on the dowel sleeves correctly, not pulling anything on with any bolts, just guided it up in there, got it to seat against the engine. I'm ready to start putting the rest of these bolts in. Now to install the bolts that hold the clutch onto the adapter plate, the barring tool is installed. I'm just going to rotate the barring tool. Bolt hole shows up, get it lined up. Then I'm going to put a drop of medium strength locking compound on there and carefully insert and tighten the bolt. Then I'll come back around and torque the bolts. 40 pound feet of torque, final torque on this. Be very careful handling these bolts. Well, I think you can see pre building this system on the bench, then take the assembly, hang it on the input shaft, the transmission. Then you're just installing that round pilot plug into the round crankshaft pilot hole on the back of that engine. This is a pretty neat system and you're not fighting stabbing that transmission. So that really helps. I've installed quite a few of these and I've actually enjoyed installing these systems. We've also got the quick start guide in the kit. That's got some of the basic clutch information that'll help you out. It's also got contact information. If you have any questions about a clutch, flywheel, or clutch hydraulic system, please contact us at Clutch Tech Support and we'll see if we can help you out.